Hello, and welcome to the Adafruit Show and Tell. I'm Liz. I'm going to be your host this evening. Uh, if you would like to join the stream show your project, you can find a link in the live broadcast chat on our Discord server, and that's at adafruit.it slash discord. Uh, so we're going to kick things off with some folks uh, from Adafruit, and then we'll hear from people in the community. So first, we'll go to our friend, Jepler. How are Hi. you? Hi. I'm doing well. Um, Good. The first thing that I want to show you is last week I was on with the uh, Metro M7 from Adafruit. This is still the green pre-release version. Nice. Uh, but this week I've changed some stuff up. It's still audio, but it's connected uh, to a different peripheral that provides PWM audio output. And this is a do as I say, not as I do. You shouldn't have the speaker directly hooked up like this, but it works good for testing. Sure. And the other thing is I've got an SD card and tonight that's where the, my samples are stored. So if you'll give me a second here, I'll put this back on the desk, cool. plug it in, and we will hear some samples I found in the Adafruit Learn system. Excellent. And I was using uh, the audio stuff today that uh, you implemented and is working quite nicely with Metro yes. 7. You were kind enough to start on the guide pages for that and everything. Um, and the audio is not starting. Well, that's fun. Oh, the live demo <laughs> gremlins have arrived. Live demo gremlins. <laughs> And uh, uh, the P oh here we go. There we go. So these are just some audio samples I found in the learning system, nice. uh, and so this is playing with the audio mixer, and I found that I can go up to at least four voices at once. So this will turn into just like a whole complete jumble, but that's playing four different uh, audio samples all at 22 kilohertz from the SD card. Nice. So you can mix audio in real time, like from different files, and it should give, you know, some latitude to do something we couldn't do on our other platform. So anyway, cool. that's mostly what I wanted to show this code, uh, both for enabling the um, speaker, <laughs> both for enabling the, the version that doesn't need the I2S um, chip, because what I showed last week goes, whoa, OK, that stuff's gone now. <laughs> um, goes through this board here, which is an I2S uh, decoder and amplifier. Mm -hmm. And instead, it comes out as a PWM signal that uh, a small speaker or a headphones can do directly. Or you can connect it to um, like a amplifier, just a regular analog amplifier. Nice. Um, and it really works quite well. They are a little deprecating. They call it medium quality sound in the manual. Yes. But it sounds, of all of our PWM audio outs, it sounds just about the best from my experience so far. So I hope you'll uh, pick up that next beta when it comes out and try this out on your Metro M7 with CircuitPython. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jeff. All right. See you later. See ya. And next we are going to hear from John Park. Hey, John. Um, mm, I don't think my we're here. camera just oh. decided to stop being a camera. Let's see. Hold yes. on. I can... You are a disembodied circle. Uh, <sighs> would you like me to come back to you? Fun. Hey, it's it's picking a funny camera. Hold on one second. I think okay. I can I can convince it to go back to. Uh... Oh, that's funny. No, it's decided my FaceTime camera doesn't exist. You know what? I can just talk as a disembodied uh, okay. orb, which is I... kind of kind of the point here, actually. So yeah. uh, what I've shown here is a game from gosh i never even looked up the date but it seems like it's probably i don't know i'm gonna guess 1979 or so uh it's it's a game called computer perfection okay and it comes in this just spectacular ashtray from the future retro future looking thing kind of like a space helmet they love uh, orbs for that orbs time. are great <laughs> and uh, this is from Lakeside, Lakeside Learning, I think. Um, it's based very loosely, I think, on a game called Perfection that was just a kind of plastic um, spring-loaded mechanism on a timer game from oh. also from the 70s where you had little shapes. I did play uh, that. Yeah, right, and they would pop, yeah. <laughs> they'd pop out at the end, so you had to race to put these little shapes that, that were sort of like these in place. So this is just only very loosely based on that. Um, it's a... Buttons and LEDs game. Let's see. Is it? Is it? It may have decided it doesn't want to start now. Uh, I've got it kind of mostly disassembled, but okay. When it works, and and that part actually doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> you basically have these 
what, 10 buttons to press? Okay, it's mm -hmm. starting to do some stuff. Um, and you're supposed to figure out some sort of mastermind-like pattern. I have it in its test mode where it just lights up each LED as you press these. Okay. Um, there's also a speaker which I've disconnected uh, as I've been taking it apart. Um, but Phil PT, Phil Tron, found uh, an image of this online and said, hey, man, this thing looks like it could really make for a neat synthesizer. Um, so I got one on eBay, pretty cheap, 20 something bucks. Uh, and I started taking it apart. And actually the, the part I'm most excited about so far is I unscrewed these two screws that were here and that's all you need to do to Ooh. get to the circuit board, which just kind of pivots beautifully, uh, that's open excellent. for you there. Um, so it's, uh, got, I've, I've taken over, there was a hinge based switch here. When you okay. open the orb is what it turns it on. I've, I've disconnected that for now and just thrown in my own little um, slide switch so I can turn it on and off. Uh, but there's the circuit board. I have started diagramming it and figuring out how it works. I'll, I'll go into way more detail tomorrow on my show, I think, especially if I can get it doing something tonight. Um, but the idea is mostly going to be to take over these buttons and switches, uh, maybe add an amplifier and speaker into the base uh, or, or on the inside there. Uh, and turn it into a, uh, a synthesizer, probably using the Metro M7 or uh, possibly an M4. But Jeff and I are going to take a look at uh, the possibility of doing some synthesis on the M7, which could be a lot of fun. And that'll mean I have a bunch of buttons to press and some switches to change parameters or patches or modulation. Um, and so this is uh, really just going to be a platform for for that experimentation. So there's awesome. computer perfection. Yes, that's so great. I'm really looking forward to this and you and Jeff's team up. And I've really enjoyed all these uh, tear down music hacking things you've been doing recently. Oh, They're thank really you. Cool. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. There's a lot of, it's interesting actually, one of the things I'll show tomorrow that I'm excited about this is a lot of the modern stuff like the Meowzics, they use the same sort of um, little conductive pet pill under a silicone or elastomer button to close some contacts. This one's got springy like leaf switches, like it's real metal switches. <laughs> and uh, so you can actually run some current over there. I think the LEDs actually in some cases light up just because you're pressing the switch. It's not the, wow. the microcontroller <laughs> or anything doing it. It's just, it's uh, it's real switches. So that's uh, that's kind of a, a change. And, and same with these, there's some nice uh, multi-position switches here. So That's awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much, JP. And we're Thank looking you. forward to seeing your show tomorrow. Come on by. Thanks. All right, now we're going to hear from some folks in the community. We're going to kick things off with Sai. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good, good, good. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, Lady Ada actually uh, um, showed off a, um, a, a IN100 beacon um, mm -hmm. in the NPI segment. Um, okay. It really piqued my interest. So I used that beacon chip. So it's a beacon a Bluetooth beacon that could be used right. to connect sensors to it. Okay. Um, so I designed a soil sensor that's oh, in the shape it. of a uh, daisy. So what I did was I took the Stemma sensor design, um, mm -hmm. took all of the components of it, um, just kept the, the soil sensing aspect of it, okay. added um, some uh, two leaves to it, and I designed this board um, that could be basically powered off of a coin cell. Um, and there is also uh, the option of using the um, uh, a photo cell um, okay. to power the entire system. It basically consumes about like uh, it needs an input voltage of about 1.8 volts. Mm -hmm. um, the board is working. Um, I still have to figure out what's its power consumption. Can it actually run off of a photo cell? Uh, right. I know that the photo cell is generating the voltage. Um, I'm really proud that it actually worked in the first attempt. I, I'm able to like That's great, look at yeah. the data uh, using my phone. Yeah. That's awesome. And so do you have these files available um, for folks to make their own or are you going to be selling them on Tindy or? It's on GitHub. Um, I'm yet okay. to finish documenting my project. Um, I have to still profile the, the current consumption and all that. Uh, but yeah. I plan to publish the, like, the, the designs are, is already on GitHub, but I plan to, like, carefully document it on Hackster or something like that. Excellent. Great. Well, um, feel free to drop the uh, GitHub link in the Discord so folks can uh, watch your progress. It's a really cool project. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Have a good night. And next, we're going to hear from DJ Devin. Hello. Hello, Liz. How are you doing? 
Good, how are you? Okay, uh, I have a 14 segment project. Excellent. Um, let me hit save here on <laughs> Moo. And now it is, the computer has a batch script that goes out to an API mm -hmm. and grabs a file that has like 18,000 lines of code in it, a CSV file. Mm -hmm. So we're talking this massive, massive file. The microcontroller itself parses the data, okay. not the PC. So, and then it shows like how many lines it just parsed. Very cool. So the S2 with its mega awesome amounts of RAM can parse that much, that many rows of data, not just like little bits of rows of data nice. uh, from a CSV uh, directly on the microcontroller. Uh, and that was a project. And then another project is this new board that I made, which was supposed to, it doesn't work. <laughs> Just right out of the bat, it doesn't work. It's okay. It was supposed to have a an Adafruit Feather, okay. a, a, a Raspberry Pi Pico, and a BFF. So any project that you want, you could put on to either one of these slots okay. and then work with it. And it's specifically designed for the Adafruit I2S uh, amplifier. Oh, that's really cool. So it's just for audio, little audio projects. Mm -hmm. So this, the amplifier is post, supposed to go out to the audio jack um, via jumper wires, but it just, I just can't, I can't get it to go past the, uh, the, the amplifier. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, that's all right. I'm, I'm sure. I think, get that I th it's, and... yeah, I'm more, it's a work in progress. I'm, I, I just built this like a couple hours ago. So, okay. Yeah. We'll see I mean, if that's I can get really that handy. I mean, I know when I do the um, the product guides, you know, there's certain examples we always have to run. So uh, I like the idea of having a board where you can plug in all the different format boards and it's going right to the, the breakout. So that's really cool. Yeah. And uh, every single one has an additional side GPIO oh, okay. on each side, Excellent. even including five volts, you know, nice. out for the, the QD Pi. There's a ground bus a 3v3 and someone posted up in the hardware forum that it was basically like a little mini dev board that I built, but that wasn't the, the, the reason. The reason was to stuff this in the mailbox to get rid of the spaghetti monster in the mailbox. Fair. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's the goal for that one. All right. Well, definitely keep coming back and uh, sharing your progress on this. Really cool. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great night. Have a good one. And next we're going to go to Mark Gambler. Hey, Mark. Hello. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. Just my, getting my camera up. Okay. All right. So you might remember, and a few others in the community, about a year ago, I showed up with a project for my birthday. Yes, um, I do remember. Two years ago, I tried to make a fan to put out a candle in the midst of COVID. It mm -hmm. did not work. It also did not light my house on fire, so I'll consider that a win. Last Excellent. year, I built a water pump that promptly flooded most of my desk area and the the desk this is now sitting on you still have it all so i thought i'd take a much cleaner <laughs> approach this year with animated gift code that i just did i thought i will just have an animated cupcake on a fun house which is the perfect form factor for this mm -hmm. and that you can now blow out so the first thing i added to this and i'm hoping this is gonna play Oops. Did we have a preemptive candle? Yeah, it, well, let's just relight it again. And that's the other Fair. bonus is it can. So it's just using a humidity sensor. I was probably too close and breathing on it. OK. But then you just go. And, it, and there it goes. There we go. Awesome. Very and yeah, cool. you can reset it as many times as you want. Without those match fumes. So that's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I haven't flooded my house or lit it on fire. So I'm going to consider all that wins. I, I also agree. had a slightly different mode. Sorry, it's copying files over to the fun house in the moment. Okay. There we go. Where in honor of last year, there's also. Okay. 
<laughs> where it will dump water on your cupcake and put it out as well. That's really funny. That's really cool. I like that every year you're building more on this. So, yeah, it's been neat. It's something to encourage me to keep going. Less destructive this year. So, that's good. All right. And the GIFIO stuff's really cool. I know folks have started to experiment with it. So, uh, thanks for adding that in. Yeah, I, I'm really happy people are using it. It's it's great to see people actually use what you've taken the time to write. Yeah, it's a really good feeling. Well, thanks so much, Mark, and happy birthday. Thanks a lot. All right. And now we're going to go back to our friend Jepler to have him. I think he out. needs to take that, that thing that you lower over the candle and like lower it with an RC servo. Oh, that would be next year, Mark. Next year, yeah. Mark. If you don't have a, a, any other ideas, you can have that one for free. So I got to do a second guide uh, with OpenAI this week, and it uses a 3D printing case. It's very similar to one uh, Liz used in her Pico W project. But uh, if you want to come to my overhead camera here, what I love about this project is it's just really easy to create your own prompts and change them out. So right now, uh, the prompt is make up and vividly describe an original, imaginary, and unconventional, but cute and charming monster. And Flufflet. I mean, who does not want to meet Flufflet, the six-legged robot koala, uh, rabbit koala, who I wants mean, to cuddle little, and sleep in the sun? <laughs> I'm a little hesitant to meet Flufflet, but I I like its name. <laughs> I mean, it's a little overwhelming, um, but yeah, and it, it you know it just comes up with stuff, and some of it is cute or some of it is funny, and then to edit it and change it, you just open your settings.toml file, and uh, I've got a bunch of different blocks that I can just enable. Oh, okay. Um, so this one is called pip install dash dash random. And it, the task is make up a PyPI module that would be useful to a house pet. Use the following <laughs> format and it explains the format that it wants. So this one kind of gets in a little bit of a rut because it doesn't know what pets want to do with computers, but you know, Fair. it was worth it was worth a try. I um, think the most entertaining is the the prompts you come up with are very creative. I, I really enjoy it. Well, them. thank you. Um, I spent an inordinate amount of pow of time thinking about it. Okay. Definitely worth uh, it. Yeah. And then I, I just always want to call out, uh, French is kind of my second language. Um, and if you write it a prompt in French, it will answer in kind. And I think that goes for a lot of world languages. Okay. And with this project, the font supports kind of most of those general European characters. Excellent. Um, yeah, I don't know what else I want to say about it, except it's a lot of fun. You can engage your own uh, kind of creativity in coming up with the prompts. Uh, but it's also a basis for just incorporating chat GPT in a project. Um, you get back the, the response kind of uh, streaming. The first one got it in a chunk. This one gets it um, a little bit at a time, a token at a time. So it's also a little bit more advanced way uh, to interact with chat GPT. Nice. I like and how the light is almost like a, I almost feel like Morse code coming in as it. As yeah, it a little bit. It's kind of I wanted I wanted you to know it was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> thinking real hard. Very cool. And this guide is live now on the learn. This system. guide is live on the learn system, so you can get that source code and put it with a Raspberry Pi Pico W running Circuit Python, a little OLED display, and uh, you just have a little bit of wiring to do to hook up the arcade button. So it's really, as, as these things go, it is a pretty manageable project, although you yeah. do have a little solder. Love it, but it's always fun to break out soldering iron. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. If you well, haven't, you, you should learn. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for showing not one, but two awesome projects. All right. You got it. Okay. Have a good week. Have a good night. All right. And that's going to do it for tonight's show and tell. Thank you, everyone, for coming by and showing your projects. In about 10 minutes, uh, right here, we'll be Ask an Engineer with PT and Lady Ada. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, have a good week, folks.